friends, it's Mrs. Angel with your lesson for today on powers. So you're, we're going to be working in our CC3 workbook and we're still going to be simplifying and we're still going to be classifying, but this time we're adding in a new term, the power. So grab those notes and let's get started. Okay, so we're gonna start off by just doing a quick review of this expression called a power. So a power is equivalent to repeated multiplication. So in a way, every power could also be written as an equivalent product, as repeated multiplication. So a power is made up of two parts. It's made up of the base, which is the factor in that multiplication of our products are made up of factors, and the exponent. And the exponent is just kind of telling you how many times you're multiplying that base by itself. So how do we read this example power? Well, we would call this two to the power of four. So you would say two to the power of four, or you could say two to the fourth power. Now, what is this actually telling us? This is telling us that we are going to multiply the base two by itself four times. So every time you're given a power, I want you to think of two things. You're gonna expand and simplify. Again, you're gonna expand and simplify. So what does that mean? Well, the first thing we're going to do is we're going to expand this power and we're going to write it as its equivalent product. So two to the power of four means I'm multiplying two by itself four times. That's called expanding. So whenever you're expanding a power, you're essentially writing it as its equivalent product. First step, expand. Second step, Simplify. Well, we know how to simplify at this point. We're just going to simplify from left to right. So at this point, I have 2 times 2 times 2 times 2. And I'm going to go one step at a time. 2 times 2 is 4. Bring down the next two factors. 4 times 2 is 8. Bring down the final factor. And 8 times 2 is a final value of 16. Now, here are some common mistakes. A lot of students will think that this is two times four, or they'll just go two, four, six, eight. What you're doing there is you're actually multiplying and adding. So we get this false sense of confidence, like this is easy, I could do this all day. Trust me, expand and simplify from left to right, and you can't go wrong. So let's look at some examples in our workbook. So a little blurb here about powers. It says a power is another type of term that you'll see in expression. And again, they're made up of that base and an exponent. So we're gonna fill in the parts of the table for each um, power and then the equivalent product and find its value. So this is more just learning how to read powers, how to interpret powers, and that expand and simplify. Here we go. Number one, or the first power in this table, this power would read two to the power of three or two to the third power. Or sometimes you hear teachers say cubed. That's because a three dimensional cube has three different dimensions. And so you can call it two cubed. Uh, the way that I like to read this is I like to say two to the power of three. That kind of always works. So I'm gonna go ahead and write that in now. 2 to the power of 3. Okay, the base of this power is the number that's going to be multiplied by itself multiple times, and then the exponent is how many times am I going to multiply that number. So we would say the base of this power is 2. That's the factor of our future product, and the exponent is 3. I sometimes like to write the exponent smaller just to not confuse it with the base. So when you see this column that says product form, here's what I want you to think. This is where we expand. To expand a power means to write it as a product. So what are we multiplying? We're multiplying two. How many times? Three times. So two times two times two. And then the value I want you to write down, this is the simplify part. Remember, every power, whoops, I'll get that out of the way. Every power is expand and simplify. Expand and simplify. So let's go from left to right here. Two times two is four. Bring down your next factor. Four times two is eight. So we would read this as two to the power of three, base two, exponent three, expands to two times two 
times two simplifies to a value of eight. Why don't you go ahead and do the next two on your own? All right, let's see how you did. The second example here, we would read as three to the power of two or three to the second power, or sometimes that exponent two is called squaring because a square is two dimensions. So I like to say three to the power of two, base three exponent two, expanded is three times three, and then simplified has a value of nine. Our last power, one to the power of six, base one, Exponent six. Now I didn't show all the steps for simplifying this because here's a little, you know, pattern that will happen. Anytime your base is one, your value is always going to be one because you're just multiplying one by itself and one times anything is itself. It's all just going to be one. Kind of a weird power. Now, what about when the base is negative? Does that change anything? Let's look at what we're told here. We're told that if the base of the power is negative and the negative is inside of parentheses, then the base is just a negative integer, which means nothing is really different here. This is still just a power. So let's do the first one. We would read this as negative two to the power of three. Just like we had in the first table, the only difference is that base is now negative two. So that means our base went from positive two to negative two. Our exponent is still three. Let's expand. Remember product form means to expand. So what does this mean? It means we're multiplying negative two by itself three times. So it did change the value when the base was negative. All right, why don't you go ahead and try the next two on your own? Let's see how you did. The second one, negative three to the power of two. Base is negative three, power to two, or exponent is two, expands to negative three times negative three, which is still positive nine. So it actually didn't change here, even though the base is negative. And then the, finally, the last one, negative one to the power of six, base negative one, exponent six, which is negative one times 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 negative one. What I did here is because I don't have a lot of space, I went a little bit out of order and I simplified kind of these pairs of products and all of these ones multiplied together, still a value of one. Now the last one here, this, I would want you to kind of think, ooh, red flag here, like warning, warning, these are different. Well, why are these different? Let's read what we're given. It says, if the, base power, if the base of the power is negative, but the negative sign is outside of parentheses, right? Notice there's no parentheses. That means the base is actually a positive integer. Wait, what? How can the base be positive if there's clearly a negative in front of it? Well, that's because of this right here. These expressions are actually products with a hidden negative one. What the heck does that mean? Well, let's look at what the first one says here. Now we would look at this and think, well, that's still negative two to the power of three, but is that negative in parentheses? It's actually not. So here's what you can do to kind of make this a little bit easier is you can put in parentheses, but you have to make sure not to include the negative. So here's what I would do. I would go in, and I would draw some parentheses, but just around the two. So you can put them in there, but exponents are very particular. They only affect or are tied to what they're directly connected to. If that negative isn't in parentheses, that negative is not part of your power. So here's what this actually means. It actually means negative one times two to the power of three. So really, here's the weird part, as if this wasn't weird enough already. These are actually not even powers, technically, they're products. This is actually negative one times three to the second power, negative one times one to the sixth power. I know, totally weird and crazy. Hopefully, again, red flag, red flag, no parentheses, what's going on, right? So in this first one, 
The base here is actually positive two. Weird, I know, but pay attention to what the exponent's actually connecting to. The exponent's still three, so here's our expansion, right? Here's where we expand. There is your power, two to the power of three, and here is where that negative outside of parentheses comes in. It's a hidden negative one, and those happen all the time in math. As we get into algebra, you're going to see hidden negative ones all over the place. So negative one times two is negative two times two times two, and I'm already out of room. So here we go. Um, negative two times two is negative four times two is negative eight. All right. Yeah, I probably should have given you a little bit more room there, right? All right, so the value here, negative 8, and um, it is a negative value, so I wonder if that's a pattern. I want you to notice the difference here before you do the last one. Notice in our table above when the negative was inside of parentheses to the power of 2, the value was positive 9. When the negative was outside of parentheses to the power of 2, the value was negative 9. So does this matter? Oh, yeah, this matters a lot. Why don't you go ahead and do the last one on your own? Just keep in mind, 1 to any power would be positive 1, but that negative 1 does make it the final value negative. So, like, look at the, the table above. When it's in parentheses, it actually was positive. No parentheses turn out to be negative. So does this matter? Uh -huh. Yeah, this matters a lot. So let's just recap. So as we learned, powers are equivalent to products. Doesn't mean that the expression would be classified as a product. It just means that they are equivalent. They are made up of the base, which is the number being multiplied by itself, and the x it telling you how many times to multiply it and then every time you encounter a power you think expand which means to write it as a product and simplify which means to actually do that math from left to right as long as you expand and simplify you will not go wrong that's it for today's video I will see you next time